Welcome back to The Explanation Pro. Today I'll recap a war adventure film called, Inglorious Bastards. Spoilers incoming. The movie begins with the French farmer Perrier Le Padite chopping a block of wood. His daughter, Julie, notices an arriving German military vehicle approaching their house. Perrier welcomes Landa as he wishes to discuss the whereabouts of the Dreyfuses, a Jewish family. Landa starts interrogating Perrier as if he is capturing Perrier to have a slip of the tongue and expresses the information he needs. However, Perrier continues to persist until Landa catches him off guard and bargains that Perrier and his family will be safe once he agrees to tell them the information they need. As La Padite aims to secure his family's safety, he tearfully admits that he keeps the Dreyfuses within his house. La Padite instructs Landa that the Dreyfuses are hiding under the floorboards, and Landa orders the soldiers to enter his home and shoot on the floor. The brutal shooting of bullets had killed the Dreyfuses. Luckily, Shasana, the Dreyfus' daughter, escaped through a hole beneath. Shasana fearfully runs for her life as Landa lets her go as he wishes she would die in the hands of the Nazis along her journey. Three years later, Lt. Aldo Rain recruits Jewish-American soldiers to prepare for the incoming armada to overthrow the Nazis. He encourages these Jewish-American people to join the commando, the bastards, that will fight back against the German enemies. Aldo orders his men to disguise themselves to kill and collect scalps to prove that they have instilled fear in the Germans. The scalping also manifests that the Jewish-American soldiers have terminated the Nazis during their mission. Adolf Hitler becomes pretty mad when he discovers that the fear-induced delirium continuously eliminates his soldiers. He angrily lashes his hatred towards the Jews as the Jewish-American soldiers brutally torture his men, especially the bear Jew who violently kills his men using a baseball bat. In a remote forested area, several dead German bodies are being subjected to scalping as the Jewish-American soldiers avenge the death of the Jewish victims. The bastards have captured Sergeant Werner Rachtman. He is interrogated to betray his country as Aldo encourages him to spill the information about the Nazis' whereabouts through the help of a rogue German soldier Sergeant Hugo Stiglitz and the group translator, Corporal Wilhelm Wicke. Sergeant Hugo Stiglitz is a famous Gestapo killer, he killed 13 officers in total. After being caught, he was sent to Berlin to serve as an example to traitors of the states. As his skills are exceptional, the bastards have tried getting his alliance as he will be a great asset to the team. Aldo encouraged Rachtman to spill the tea, but the latter remained firm in protecting his comrades. Aldo threatened Rachtman in dealing with the bear Jew if he remained silent with the information, but this act did not affect him. Annoyed with Rachtman's refusal, Aldo called Donny, the infamous bear Jew, to torture him. Donny shows no mercy as he expertly smashes his head till he bleeds to death. Aldo bargains with the last German captive, Private Brutz, in their hands, trying to win him over through threats and promises of freedom. Aldo presents a map so Brutz can quickly pinpoint the exact location of the Nazi troops. Brutz has fed Aldo the information he needs, and as promised, Aldo will set him free. But Aldo ensured that he would be giving the Nazi a mark that would remind him of his arrest. Brutz received a forehead marking from Aldo's knife. Upon retrieving the only survivor of the bastard attack, Hitler summons Brutz to his office in Germany to interrogate him. Brutz did not disclose that he had breached his duty and had revealed important Nazi military information to the bastards. He had only shown Hitler the swastika markings on his forehead, the mere reminder of him being a Nazi for life. In Paris, Shasana Dreyfus is now using Emmanuel Mimu to operate her cinema business while hiding her identity from the cruel Nazis. While she is fixing her cinema's exterior, she meets a famous German sniper, Frederick Zoller, waiting outside and tries flirting and befriending her. Frederick tries to get Emmanuel's interest by telling his love for her cinema, and the film shows available. Emmanuel tries ignoring the guy as she rudely bids her goodbye, but Frederick asks for her name, and the lady provides her passport to prove her identity. While Emmanuel enjoys reading her book in an eatery, Frederick passes by and notices the busy lady. Frederick knocks on the glass window to announce his presence and immediately joins the restaurant. Annoyed with his company, Emmanuel asks him to leave but Frederick tries to win her. However, many people from the place start approaching and fangirling towards Frederick. Emmanuel discovers that Frederick is a famous sniper who had killed 250 soldiers during the battle. Frederick reveals that he will be starring in a movie that will manifest his heroism during their invasion encounters. Frederick's achievements during the war have been recognized by many. He starred in the Nazi propaganda film, The Nation's Pride to celebrate his said marvelous yet valorous performance. Upon knowing the backstory of Frederick's image, 
Emmanuel bids her goodbye and leaves him to avoid his presence. As Emmanuel was cleaning her exterior, German soldiers approached her. Major Dieter Hellstrom escorted and summoned her to join them. To her surprise, it is an invitation to Frederick's party so he could introduce her to Joseph Goebbels's nation's pride movie launch. The growing affection of Frederick towards Emmanuel has driven his action in convincing Joseph Goebel to hold the premiere at her cinema. With Frederick's perseverance to persuade Joseph Goebel, the latter agrees and demands an exclusive showroom experience at her cinema to watch a German film before he finally decides. Moments later, Landa appears and will serve as the head security of the upcoming premiere night. Upon seeing him, floods of memories run through Emmanuel's mind, the memories of that unfaithful death of his family in Landa's hands. As they are about to leave, Landa demands to talk to Emmanuel for a short interrogation. Despite the fear eating her system, Emmanuel has answered Landa's questions. When Landa leaves Emmanuel behind, she starts crying out of fear, anger, and trauma that she has felt towards his dangerous presence. Right after the visit has happened in Emmanuel's cinema, she informs Marcel, her Afro-French lover and projectionist, about her plans of killing the Nazi leaders during the premiere night. Through the use of Madame Mimu's nitrate film print collections, they can quickly burn down the cinema. These nitrate film papers burn three times faster than regular papers, a perfect fit for the arson that they are planning. On the other hand, British Commando Lieutenant Archie Hycox is summoned by General Ed Fennick and is being interviewed about his achievements. Upon knowing his capabilities, he is recruited to Operation Kino and lead the British attack, together with the Bastards, during the Nazi premiere night hosted by Joseph Goebel. General Ed Fennick informs Hycox that Stiglitz and Wiki will accompany him to go and meet the undercover German allied agent Bridget von Hammersmark, who is also a famous film German star in the industry. The three will meet Bridget in a tavern in a basement in northern Paris to plan the nearing gala premiere. The three arrive where German soldiers are having a small celebration that eventually may put them on dangerous ground. Still, the three continued their agenda in crafting their plan as Bridget informed them that the premiere gala would not happen in the Ritz, it would take place in a much smaller cinema. She drops that explosives will be more effective in the cinema as a limited and smaller place would accommodate the Nazis. Eventually, Hycox drew attention when he had a feud with a German soldier. Wehrmacht Sergeant Wilhelm and Major Dieter Hellstrom notice the unusual accent that Hycox carries. He interferes in the growing tension between the soldiers as he points out that they might be intruders. Through the help of Vaughn and a little convincing using Hycox's knowledge, he was able to convince Wilhelm. Hellstrom joins their table as he continuously seeks answers about Vaughn's affiliations with the three. The tree played a game, but right after Hellstrom's turn, Hycox frankly tells him that he invades their business. As Hellstrom tries to lighten the mood, he notices the hand gestures of Hycox were a British hand signal when he treated them with a drink. Hellstrom informs Hycox that he is pointing his gun towards his balls, but the latter tells him that he has been doing that since he sat down on their table. Stiglitz also helped Hycox and directly pointed his gun in his sweet banana, making Hellstrom shiver in nervousness. Just like a bomb that has exploded, Stiglitz impatiently showers the thing between Hellstrom's legs with bullets. This caused a ruckus, a crossfire between the intruders and the German soldiers. Everyone was shot dead, except for Wilhelm and von Hammer's Mark, who was shot in the leg. Moments later, Aldo arrives and tries to negotiate with Wilhelm for von's freedom, the German agrees for the sake of his son. But when Wilhelm lowers his guards, von immediately shoots him, killing him instantly. Aldo believes Vaughn has planned to eliminate his men, so he tortures her until she tells him the truth. Aldo inserted his finger inside the gunshot wound she received from the earlier gunfight, but Vaughn tried her best to convince her that it wasn't her fault. She informs Aldo that Hycox accidentally reveals himself through the hand signals he made when he ordered a drink for the three of them. Together with Donnie and Ulmer, Aldo has decided to continue terminating the Nazis. Vaughn informs them that tuxedos will help them hide their identities, as the Nazis will also do the same to blend in with the crowd. Vaughn also told them of the change of venue and the appearance of Hitler in the gala premiere. Later on, Landa investigates the tavern incident and sees the odd setting inside. When he notices a woman's shoe, and it seems that someone is missing, he asks one of the soldiers to find some clues. Landa found the napkin with Vaughn's signature on it and brought the thing as it might solve the case sooner or later. The glamorous party takes place as the Nazis celebrate the premiere night of the propaganda film that will boost the German ego. While the people enjoy the celebration, Landa is on the balcony watching and observing the guests keenly. 
When Landa notices the injured Von socializing with Aldo, Donny, and Omar, he immediately strides his way downstairs to greet her. Landa interrogates Von about her leg injury, and as he hears about her excuses, Landa starts to overreact and laughs hard. They feel very awkward with Landa's behavior as he is beginning to catch attention in the crowd. Landa then approaches Von to apologize, as he also questions the identity of Von's acquaintances. She introduces the three as Italian nationals who are affiliated with the film industry. But when Landa communicates with Aldo and Omer, he notices that strange accent and uncertainty within Aldo's voice, a room to be suspicious of their appearance at the party. Emmanuel goes to Marcel's place, where he will be presiding and maneuvering the projection of the film. She instructs him of the signals she will be making before he executes the plans to terminate the Nazis inside. As the show might start, the guests are instructed to settle down and find a specific place to enjoy the propaganda film. It then reveals that Omar and Donny are wearing time bombs on their ankles that will bombard the area later. Meanwhile, Landa invites Von to a short conversation where he confronts her and lets her try the shoe he retrieved from the tavern. Landa aggressively attacked Von, he tackled her on the ground and choked her to death. Von tries her best to struggle in his tight grip, but as a woman who does not have the same strength, she fights her way till she loses her breath. After killing her, he orders his men to capture Aldo and oblige. Aldo and his comrade, Smithson Yudovich, are taken as prisoners, they are brought to the office to interrogate them. Landa revealed that Vaughn had been sentenced with her betrayal to Germany, justice for her deceptive intentions to Germany. Landa asks Aldo to call his superior to settle things and immediately end the war. The thing is, Landa is asking for a safe passage using the Allied lines as he will be given a pardon and other privileges that might benefit him. While the screening takes place, Donny sneaks out to check on Hitler's whereabouts. When Donny has already located his target, he immediately returns to their site to call Omar. Omar clumsily exits as he is disturbing the audience from watching. When it was the right time to execute the plan, Marcel and Emmanuel kissed goodbye. Marcel sneaks out to obey her orders as he plans to lock the doors around the cinema. Marcel locked all the possible passageways to trap the Nazis inside and went where the scattered nitrate film prints were. Frederick excuses himself to Joseph Goebbels when the action from his war experience rises. He goes where Emmanuel is making the projection and knocks on her door upon arrival. Frederick tries his luck to win her over, but Emmanuel remains stoic and unmoved, but the guy is rather persistent in annoying her. As Frederick becomes violent and too pushy, Emmanuel deceives him and asks him to lock the door. Turning his back, she quickly picks up her gun and shoots him several times. When she tries checking on him, Frederick surprisingly shoots him back upon flipping his body. When the film reaches its peak, Emmanuel's video appears, as she speaks her last words before she orders Marcel to burn down the movie. Marcel throws his cigarette to the pile of nitrate films upon hearing the signal, and the fire starts to spread. The fire slowly eats the curtain and the entire stage. The people are now overwhelmed with the arson, a holocaust for the Nazis. The viewers had gone mad as they would be killed if the fire continued to grow. The cinema has become chaotic as the fire turns the small cinema into ashes. On the other hand, Omer and Donny go where Joseph and Hitler stay, showering them with lots of bullets, ensuring their death at once. After securing the forever rest of the leaders, Omer and Donny go to the balcony and shoot the Germans to death. The movie ends when Landa and his radio operator bring Aldo and Yudovich into the Allied territory and surrender them under their supervision. Aldo shoots the operator before he orders Ultovich to scalp its head. Aldo then carves his famous swastika markings on Landa's forehead, labeling it his masterpiece. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video please hit the like button and also subscribe my channel for more videos like this. See you in the next video.